No lie can compete in popularity with the claims that fiber keeps the colon clean because it speeds up elimination. Not true. According to the highly respected and authoritative Rome II, the Functional Gastrointestinal Disorders textbook, there is little or no relationship between dietary fiber and whole gut transit time. In fact, as I explain in Fiber Menace, fiber delays and extends gut transit time more than any other food ingredient, and it is the number one cause of chronic constipation, hemorrhoids, diverticulosis, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease. So if anything, fiber makes your colon really clogged and really dirty. For the same false reasons that people believe in cleansing power of fiber, everyone and the uncle also believes that fiber relieves constipation. Not true, according to the experts from the American College of Gastroenterologist Functional Gastrointestinal Disorders Task Force. All legitimate clinical trials did not demonstrate a significant improvement in stool frequency or consistency when compared with placebo. In plain English, it means fiber is no better at relieving constipation than a sugar pill. Indeed, how could it be when fiber causes constipation in the first place? Again, I describe the exact reasons behind fiber-constipation connection in Fiber menace. Finally, consider the stern warnings that accompany Metamucil, a popular fiber supplement made from psyllium. Bloating, gas, and a feeling of fullness may occur. If these effects continue or become bothersome, inform your doctor. Notify your doctor if you experience stomach cramps, nausea, vomiting, rectal bleeding, unrelieved constipation. If you notice other effects not listed above, contact your doctor or pharmacist. That doesn't describe a health food, does it? At this point, the following question may be nagging your mind. Why then, Mr. Monastersky, despite all of this damning evidence, is fiber still being promoted and praised from all quarters as if it is manna from heaven? That was the answer to your question. You see, Making cereals from wheat bran, a traditional cattle feed, is just as profitable as printing paper money. Turning chicken feed from India into Metamucil and selling it for 10-15 bucks a bottle beats selling dope, and it is absolutely legal to boot. Finally, the more people get sick from fiber, the more money will be made on tests, drugs, surgeries, and hospital stays. In other words, business as usual. Well, these were all true facts about fiber purported health benefits. And I hope you've noticed that my analysis was based entirely on mainstream sources of medical information. Nothing from the fringes, not a bit. You'll find plenty more equally disturbing facts from similar sources in my book and on my site, so I hope you'll study both and reduce your consumption of processed and supplemental fiber accordingly. Rest assured, I am not on a crusade to kill off all traces of fiber in favor of another extreme. In fact, the very first chapter of Fiber Menace opens with the following sentence. If you consume minor quantities of fiber from natural, unprocessed food, there isn't anything wrong with it. My beef, as I said, is with too much processed fiber and the resulting digestive metabolic and cardiovascular disorders. So if anyone tells you that my book or my recommendations are extreme or not somehow mainstream, it is a lie. And consider this undeniable fact. The people of Japan enjoy the highest longevity in the world. And guess what? The traditional Japanese diet, based around fish, seafood, and white rice, is practically fiber-free. Finally, never forget, kids don't choose their food, parents do. So please, choose wisely, because fiber harms young children much, much more than adults, and the damage is oftentimes irreversible. Thank you for watching. I wish you and your family good luck and good